Well, it really is my privilege today to talk to Ed Fontaine, the lead pastor of Springvale Church in Stouffville, Ontario. He's been there for 10 years. And if you go to his website, you'll find out that he feels like he's always sore from CrossFit. <laughs> Me too, at least you're exercising. That's awesome. He's a proud grandfather and he loves skiing, but not falling. I think a lot of us could identify with that. It is so uh, good to have you here. Thank you for being with us here today. Thanks, Bill. It's great to be here. Yeah, so, I, you know, you have a really fascinating story, and I think it would be a real source of encouragement to so many people. So just tell me a little bit about, about your life story. I, I know you grew up in Prince Edward Island. Tell me a little bit about that. What was it like for you growing up, and maybe what led you to doing what you're doing today? Well, I uh, grew up in a religious home, but we, ne we went to church, but... Uh, it wasn't a church that preached that you had to have a personal relationship with Christ. So I knew all the basics, like the Bible was the word of God, Jesus was the son of God, and that I was a sinner, but I didn't know what to do about it. I started hanging around with some friends in high school, and they took me to a youth group. And at the same time in high school, the teacher in the English class did a play called The Scopes Trial, and, and it's the, about the story of bringing uh, Darwin in, Darwinism into the educational system in the States. Uh, and in that, she asked uh, in the class, are you an atheist, an agnostic, or a believer? And that really made me start thinking. So I have the youth group that I'm going to, preaching the word to me, and then now in class. And uh, I talked to one of my friends one time, and my friend just said, you know, you have to make a decision to receive Christ on your own. It's not good enough that you go to church. It's not good enough that you belong to a religious family. You have to deal with your own sin. And the only way to do that is with Christ. And so I realized that's what I had to do. I admitted my sin to God. I believed that Jesus died for my sin, and then I chose to surrender my life to him. That was probably about grade 11 in the middle of high school. Wow, yeah, and I think for those of us who have had that experience, it is truly powerful, a transformation. And so so you made that, that, made, that, they made that choice, and you said yes, um, and so just what have been some of the life lessons you've learned along your life journey? I mean, you've obviously now you're a lead pastor in a church and how did you, how did you come by that and what you've learned, what have you learned along the way? Oh, uh, so, uh, so my friends, uh, after I graduated said, you know, Ed, you really should come to Bible school with us because, uh, you need to, you, before you go to university, you you know, your life's going to just take a wrong turn. So they convinced me to go to a one year Bible school there. I put my, uh, there I had a sense of God calling me to ministry in particular missions. And so I changed the whole direction of my life, used the word pivot. I was pivoting years ago. So, uh, then I started to go to Bible schools and got my bachelor's and really with a sense of going on the mission field, a teacher convinced me I need to go to seminary, which I did. I married Crystal and we went to seminary. And when I was in my last semester, of course, the big question is, well, what are you going to do next? And it occurred to me, I never thought of this, that I wasn't going to just go from seminary to the mission field. I had to get some experience and support if I was going to go. So I applied for a church uh, in Canada, in Huntsville. And Crystal said to me, you know, Canada is as needy as many countries in the world. Why don't we serve here? And so I moved into a pastoral ministry position, associate position. And I knew that this was what God called me to do. And so I've been doing that for the last 25, 30 years, uh, serving as associate, then as a senior pastor. Yeah, no, that's fascinating to me because it seems to me that for you, the other people had a huge influence, impact in your life. And then you also said you listened to the call of God. So for those who are watching this right now, uh, what would you say, how do you know if God is calling you or is God is, is speaking to you? What have you learned uh, through that or about that? Yeah, I think we learned that from scripture, God speaks, but when he speaks to you personally, it's really, it can get wonky because it can become so subjective. <laughs> so I mean, there's always that sense within that you're hearing God speak. And I've learned over the years that if if you hear something from God, give it time. And if it goes away, it wasn't from God. But if it stays with you and you keep having conviction about it, then you need to take the next step, which is be praying and seeking God in his word and allowing his word and his spirit to keep deepening that impression or to let it go away. And then ultimately, uh, another thing I always do is, it's not just time and hearing the voice of God and going into the word and prayer, but then wise counsel. 
And so I talked to people, does this make sense? And that call to ministry was confirmed not in a week, but over years as different people spoke into my life. And so uh, over time, it became stronger and stronger as I followed what I thought was God's leading and listening to people around me as well as seeking him in the word. Right. So for you, it kind of started as an impression, um, something you felt maybe you should do. And then it was really confirmed by those around that you trusted and valued. Like you, you mentioned your wife, you mentioned uh, teachers, uh, friends, key people. And so I think that's really powerful. If, you, if you're wondering, yeah, seek some really wise counsel. That, that's fantastic. Well, no, so, now, so now you're pastoring a church. Um, and I'm sure that you get to talk to all kinds of people and all kinds of experiences. Um, what, do you, what have you learned about just human experience and how to experience the transformative power of God in your life as just living in this world that we live in right now? You know, one of the things that I've uh, sensed uh, or learned is we want God to work quick and often he mm. works slowly. Um, it, when, it, when things happen, sometimes they happen really quickly. But the heart and soul change really happens slowly and with a lot of pain. And so uh, I think we got to accept and learn that faith isn't me trusting God for what I want him to do. So God, I pray this, that you bring this pain out of my life, or you would give me this, what I'm asking for. And we, you know, we, we're encouraged, trust God, have faith in him. But faith isn't trusting God for what I want him to do. Faith is trusting God to be good. Mm -hmm and to do good, especially when I don't know why he's doing what he's doing, and I don't like what he's doing, that's where faith really comes <laughs> to it. And, and, and when God wants to use you, there'll often be a breaking period before that use. God has to remove some you know, parts of your life that are blocking you or being a lid to you. And that removal process, Hebrews chapter 11, is often a painful process, but it's the way a father works with his children to help bring them to the point that he wants to bring them to. I think I've also learned that um, prayer is a lot more powerful than uh, I realized. So when I was in my 30s and 40s, it was what I could do. I, you know, I, I did a lot of things. Not all were good, not all turned out really well, but I'm finding more and more <laughs> that when you pray and seek God, he works slowly, often, but he, his work is way better. And so as I, before I start to work and, and do things and, and come up with ideas, I still have to do that. I spend time in prayer, trusting God, watching for what he's doing. He has an amazing way of accomplishing things in our lives, in our children's lives, in our grandchildren's lives, in ways that I can never do. I, I only put pressure and try to control things where God brings about different change. So I learned that about myself. I, Prayer is really an incredible gift given to us. Those are really great words of advice. Listen for God's voice, trust his way, and seek him. And so thank you so much for sharing your story uh, with us today. I know it's going to encourage so many. So just thank you for being here today. Thank you, Bill. It's been a pleasure being here. Mm -hmm.